Now, life may begin at 40 or even 64, but does mental decline begin as early as 45? That's the conclusion of a 10-year study by researchers in France and the UK. The study looked at 7,000 civil servants aged between 45 and 70. Cognitive function was tested three times over the 10-year period. The tests covered three areas, memory, vocabulary and comprehension skills, and including writing down as many animals as you could think of. The oldest did fare the worst. Men aged between 65 and 70 declined by nearly 10% over the 10-year period. But over the same period, those aged between 45 and 50 also declined by 3.6%, suggesting the grey cells begin to wane much earlier than previously thought. We're joined now by Dr Simon Ridley, Head of Research at Alzheimer's Research UK. Um, this 3.6%, I mean, it could be margin of error, couldn't it? Well, probably not. It was quite a large study and the statistics were done robustly. But as you say, it is very small, and it's also worth pointing out, this isn't dementia. This, these are very small, subtle changes. And the real question is, will they lead to bigger changes later on in life? And that's what we need to find out. But when you're looking at the older age group, um, are you looking at the beginnings of dementia? Possibly. Um, but again, I think we need to see more research over time, because these longitudinal studies, is what they're called, as, as they're called, take a very long time, and they're very complicated. And I think also this was with quite a, a select uh, um, population, and we would need to see this repeated in a much wider, more representative population group. Yeah, why did you choose civil servants? They're a sort of particular breed. <laughs> well, I mean, the study was initiated to look at a number of different health outcomes over time, and uh, this, this seemed like a good group at the time. But, and, but... and are men in worse shape than women? Uh, they do fare slightly worse uh, on, on this, particularly the older age group. But again, the, these are subtle changes. What about combating it? I mean, is there any evidence that anything does any good? Well, I think one thing this, this study does highlight is perhaps um, the, the possibilities of intervening in midlife, because I think generally people think that if we are to combat dementia later in life, actually we need to start as early as possible. But we don't know that we're going to get it. Well, we don't, and again, that's why we need more research to try and pick up the earliest possible signs. We need to see whether subtle changes in cognition in midlife will translate to dementia. They may not, of course, in many people. So we need to look at other markers. Of... But then are you suggesting everybody should do something in case they do? Well, there are other health benefits of, of having a, a healthy lifestyle, diet and exercise and so on, which might benefit, for example, well, cardiovascular risk. What sort of exercise? Risk. Exercise that, that, that breeds endorphins and pushes things around your body or what? Well, I mean, most people think that, that even a, a brisk walk a day could maybe be beneficial in a number of health outcomes. And because you want oxygen pouring into the brain? That's, that's one uh, explanation. There are other things, for example, you might want to avoid diabetes, which is a risk factor. Um, so, so there are various ways. This, uh, dementia is very complicated, and so we need to think of all the factors which, which uh, occur in lifetime over decades, and perhaps looking even further back than we imagined originally. Dr Simon Ridley, thank you very much indeed thank for you. coming in.